I never knew that the way people described you would become a prison until they did it. You are at your best when you are authentic to your core and you have to be what you are, not what they call you. And what happens in life as we evolve as a person, we cannot allow ourselves to be incarcerated by anything that people would describe us with because we limit then what the Holy Spirit can do in your life. I was uh, raised by a dying father, born in between two dead babies. I really value the preciousness of life. The baby before me died and the baby after me died and my mother clutched to me as only a mother can who has lost a child. And an appreciation for the value of life and a refusal to allow anybody to take away the great privilege of being alive. I will think for myself. I will move in my own direction. You can say whatever you want to say about it, but I'm going to be me. I believe that everything we ever become, we already were in seed form. I get, I would. And, and acorns don't look like oak trees, but they're in there. They're there. The design is in the seed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so when I look back at my DNA and my propensity to lead and my proclivity to talk and my fascination with life, my mother used to say that the world is a university and everyone in it is a teacher. When you wake up in the morning, mm. be sure you go to school. And I've been doing that all of my life. Mm. Yeah, I've learned from everybody I ever met, good or bad, right or wrong. Yeah. I learned something. You're curious, aren't you? Oh, extremely. You're curious. Extremely. I don't know anybody who ever became major in any area of life, not just church, any area of life, who was not propelled by the force of some level of crushing. Something, something that could have killed you and should have killed you became the catalyst and the urgency through which you evolved into your, the highest expression of who you were meant to be. And I am telling you that the greatest part of you is still somewhere down inside of you and only pressure will get it out. Only pressure. Yeah, that you have not seen who you are in the pleasant moments when you smell the blossoms on the vine and feel the sun drench on your face, that you were raised not to be fruitful, but to be crushed. The grape is one of the few fruits that is raised to be crushed. Look at that. You know, with yeah. crushing in mind, Christ was born to die. Anything short of that would have been failure. That's why when Peter tried to stop the crucifixion, yeah. he called him a devil because he understood that he was raised like the grape to be crushed. Mm. The Bible says that Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem, but he did not rest his head until it was on the cross. Mm. And understanding that for this purpose came I into the world. Mm -hmm. And not that you love suffering, he despised the shame, but for the joy Boy, that was that's... set before him. He's so he looked beyond the crushing and he saw the why. You see, and, and, and understanding that wine is taking that grape into its most powerful expression, and it is putting it in its most eternal form. And life crushes us from time to time because nothing else will get out of you the hidden treasure that we have locked up in earth and vessels, but to be crushed. You, you know, the, the funny thing about it, I think, periodically wherever there is purpose and wherever there is resistance to that purpose pressure releases us from that resistance and the more that we yield to the process but the problem today is that we don't preach process we preach promises yeah so we have raised a generation of people who see god in promises mm. not process mm. So you go to church on Sunday and you hear about the promises of God, you go home to the process. And when you encounter the process, you say, well, God is not in this. Right. And I would argue that God is more in the process than he is in the promise. Mm -hmm. When you pass through the waters, I'll, I'll be, be with you. When you go through the fire, I'll be there. His promise is to be with you in the process. Mm -hmm. and, and, and there are things that you cannot learn about him until you are in the process.
There is a revelation of his glory that only comes in the frustration and the disruption of your life. He said, I'm a present help in trouble. If you avoid the trouble, you'll avoid me. I am present in trouble. I am revealed in trouble. Mm. I, I show myself strong. When men forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. So it was good for me that I have been afflicted. Had I not been afflicted, I would have never known the glory of God. Exactly. So all through the Bible, the Bible keeps, the very symbol of our faith is a crush on place, a cross, an emblem of suffering and shame. Mm -hmm. It's not a crown. It's not a throne. It's a cross. It's a cross. Who makes an invitation from a cross but Jesus? Yes. You know, you make an invitation, you say, come go to Hawaii, you know. <laughs> you know, let's go to Switzerland. Jesus says, come on, let's go to the cross. That's a hard, that's a hard invitation. Take up your cross and follow me. Come on, let's die. If the only way you can follow that kind of request is to know that what is on the other side is greater than anything that was before it. But I want to warn the audience about invisible crushings that come from forces that you cannot see, like stress and heartbreak and pain. Nobody has to be sick or lock you up or you don't have to come out of prison for you to be crushed by stress. Science teaches us that the same part of our body that reacts to physical pain, <clears throat> the same signal goes to your brain from emotional pain. It sends out the same stimuli throughout the neurological system mm. when your heart is broken as if it would if your leg was broken. So you don't necessarily have to incur physical injury mm. to be crushed by emotional stress. And we're living in a time of, of unseen forces bearing down on our soul on a daily basis. Everything is going so fast and in that fast pace that we live in, there is a certain amount of invisible pressure. And the strange thing about it is, you feel the pain, you sense the pressure, and you can't see the source. Mm. And God says, you can, you can either see it as the wine press, or you can see it as the potter's wheel. But the more it spins, the more he touches it, and the more it changes in the spinning. And if you are not prepared for disruption, then you're not prepared for resurrection. And, and I'll be honest, that somebody said, that's not easy to do. It's not something that you do from the place of your emotions. It's something that you do from the place of your teaching. I went through a period in my life that I was just being crushed. My heart was broken. I was worried. It was one of the most distraught moments in my life. And I was literally crying when I told God this. I said, Lord, I hate this. I absolutely hate this. But I love you. And I know you would not allow me to go through this if it were not for my good. And though tears are running down my face and I cannot see my way out, if you suffered me to be bruised, it is only to make me better. And so I trust you when I can't trace you. Yeah. Because he that hath began a good work in me, and if whatever he ordered for me to face, when it's all over, it has got to end for me. The relationship that I am the most secure of is him. And the reason I am so secure is there's nothing about me that he has not considered. All things are naked before him with whom we have to do. I could disappoint my wife or disappoint my children or disappoint my mother. They could find out something about me and change their mind about me. God could never find out anything about me. And I cannot be surprised. Yeah, he cannot be surprised. <laughs> there, there's nothing yeah. about me that he doesn't already know. He's already made up his mind about me. It isn't always possible to explain no, sir. suffering. It isn't always possible to, to make people rejoice in that type of agony. I teach people, just survive it. Just survive it. Don't yeah. try to understand it. Right. Just survive it. Yeah. Because if, if you survive it, on the other side of it, you're going to see something that makes it, in retrospect, make more sense than it does today. Looking back at the rearview mirror, 
it's not that it was ever a wonderful thing to go through, but had my father not died when he did, I wouldn't be who I am. His death was, was the birth of my ministry. You see, and, and this, the seeds always hint to us that life comes out of death. As the outer encasement corrodes in the ground, they enter life, verse four. And everything that dies in you is only so that something else can be born in you.